Hello, welcome to Online Healing Crusade. I'm so glad to welcome you again tonight. I will believe the Lord has been blessing you if you've been joining us for some time. And um, if this is your first time, you're welcome. Uh, this is Online Healing Crusade. And uh, it takes place every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So tomorrow we're expecting you to come. Uh, we expect you to come meet with the Lord because it's the Lord that orchestrated this. We believe the Lord has brought you and God knows you are there. The Holy Ghost is there with you. And the word of the Lord, with the anointing of the Lord, will be coming your way tonight. I don't know whatever challenge you have or whatever questions you have in your heart. Or you want God to answer some things. You just know this matter, it's only God that can help you. Bring it to the Lord. God has the answer to it. That's why God has sent his servant and anointed him to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. All you need to do is to believe. If you want to receive something from God, just believe. Believe the word of the Lord is coming your way. Believe he sent his servant unto you. Believe the word of the Lord is in his mouth. God gave him that word and he's coming with that word. Just believe and receive it. I tell you, the Lord is going to be. And the anointing of the Lord will move in your direction because God knows you are there and the Holy Ghost is with you. Hallelujah. Join me tonight to welcome the servants of the Lord, Evangelist Lee, Ulufemi Ogunani, as he brings the word of life unto us again tonight from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. I believe God is going to meet us again so strongly tonight. God bless you and stay connected. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the opportunity to bring you the word of life today. I believe God has something to do and uh, to bring you this same word today in a way that it will reach you uh, perfectly and uh, powerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let's get into the scripture. I want to share with you from Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 today. Mm -hmm. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. The Bible says that, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise, with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calf of the stall. This is Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 from Amplified Classic. But unto you that revere and worshipfully fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And his beams, note that. And you shall go forth and gamble like calves, released from the store, and you leap for joy. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2 from Message. It says, But for you, sunrise, the sun of righteousness will dawn on those who honor my name. Healing, radiating from its wings, you'll be bursting with energy, like calves, frisking and frolicking. Okay, Luke chapter 13 from verse 10 to 17. As he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years. And was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day. And said unto the people, There are six days in which man ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound? Lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And other people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Praise God. 
what did I want you to get here? There are a lot of things that um, people know, but they don't really understand how it flows. Let me read that same Luke 13, 10 to 17 from TPT. TPT is the Passion's Translation. On Sabbath day, while Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he encountered a seriously handicapped woman. She was crippled and had been doubled, doubled over for 18 years. Her condition was caused by a demonic spirit of bondage that has left her unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her condition, he called her and uh, gently laid his hands on her. And he said, Dear woman, you are free, released. You are released forever from this crippling spirit. Instantly, she stood straight and tall, overflowed with glorious praise unto God. And the Jewish leader who was in charge of the synagogue was infuriated over Jesus' healing on the Sabbath day. Six days you are to work, he shouted angrily to the crowd. There are, these are, those are the days you should come here for healing, but not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said, you hopeless fraud. Don't you care for your animal on the Sabbath day? On time, your own ass and donkey from the store and leading them away to watering? If you do this for your animal, what's wrong with doing the same to this beloved daughter of Abraham? who has been bound by Satan for 18 long years. To be untied and to be set free on the Sabbath day. When the Lord does, has spoken, his, his critics were completely humiliated. But the crowd shouted with joy over the glorious things that Jesus was doing among them. Praise God. So I, I want to, to see where I started from, which is um, healing in his wings or healing in his hands. When you see a bird fly with wings, his hands are like his, his wings are like the hands of a man. And if the Bible says that there is healing in his wings, so that means there is healing in his hands. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when we read um, Amplify, it said, in that wings, there is beam of light oozing out. And then when you read the message, it said, healing radiating from the wings. So there is a beam of light or a race of light that is coming from that hand. And it does something destructive to the devil and the works of the devil. That's why what the devil has done in the life of somebody for 18 years can be stopped immediately. Like, stop work. Stop the curse. Start the blessing. Stop the sickness. Start the healing by just a touch. So if there's nothing in that hand, nothing will have happened to that person. But because there's something radiating from that hand, at times you see that you want to lay hand on the sick, and because those sick people have demons, they are running away. It's like they are taking their head away from your hand. Why? Is it not just to lay hand on the head? No. It's not an ordinary hand. It's an anointed hand. It's a hand that carries fire. It's a hand that is connected to cable. Are you going to a cable that is connected to power? When you buy wire from electrician or any electrical shop, you buy wire, so so mm, so so mm, whatever. And then you buy them small. They carry no life. 
If you can get home, I use it to tie something. It's not, it's not something big there. But when you get home and you connect it to a source of electrical energy, the other end is no more an ordinary end now. Once one of the end is connected to a source of power, the other end now carry fire, carry life, carry energy, carry some quantum power that come from wherever the source of energy that is enters into your house comes from. Are you guys what I'm saying? So the same way, Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. He said, he said that concerning his father, he said, without the father working in me, I can do nothing. We can also say the same, that without God working in us, we can do nothing. But we are not empty because God is working with us. So when we are connected to that God, the same hand with which I can take somebody on the street, hello, sir, how are you? Good morning. Hello, how are you, madam? Good morning. When I get into my anointing as an evangelist, and I say, I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus, and I lay that hand on you, it's not my ordinary hand. There is healing in his wings. There is healing in his wings. There is healing in his wings. Or there is healing in his hands. There is healing in that hand. That's no more not that hand. It's a hand now that's connected to a source of power. Connected to God. Without that God, we can do nothing. But we are not empty. We are with God. God with us makes us supernatural. No more natural being. Supernatural. So when that power of God comes through an anointed man, he runs through his hands. So when he lay hand on the sick, something happens. Just few days, I just came back from East Africa. And people with many years problem, a little boy, nine years old, she, he, he said, when I said, those who are healed after laying on of hands should come out to give testimony, he said he has been healed of this eye problem that he has carried for eight years. And I said, excuse me, young boy, how old are you yourself that your problem is eight years old? Say, I'm nine. So from age one, you have had problems. Say yes. Grew up with it. But now it's no more there. So I can read clearly. Everything is clear now. Now, what is in your hand that when you touch somebody that has an eight years problem, the problem does disappear? Definitely that is not ordinary. There's a pastor there, a pastor, a minister of the gospel that couldn't read his Bible without glasses. I prayed for him in the name of Jesus, and he could read that Bible. He now brought the Bible out to read clearly to other people to see. Wow. I saw another person, a woman, who's a pastor's wife, couldn't read her Bible too, without glasses. She came out. One of them was crying. Say, is this how God does miracle? Wow. That she has been looking for how to get glasses. She can't read. Now she can read very clearly. Now what is causing that? I just lay my hand on you and say, be healed in Jesus' name. And I move to the next person. I don't even waste time on people. Because when a lot of people are out there who need healing, you can't stay for one person for 30 minutes trying to get something out. Is it that God is there or God is not there? Is it that you are anointed or you are not anointed? If you are anointed, the anointing will work. If there is something that God wants to pass across through you, like Jesus Christ said, virtue has gone out of me. So issue went out of the woman. If you have the virtue, it will deal with the issue. If there's no virtue there, the issue will remain there. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there are people with 10 years problem that were healed. There are people with diverse, even somebody that the baby inside her is already, you know, still. No sign of life. No movement for a long time. But she's been scared. What kind of problem do I carry here in my woman in my, in my, in my womb? But she came out, was prayed for, she fell under the anointing. By the time the pastor lifted her up, she said, Wow, the baby is now kicking inside of me. Thank God, life has come back to the womb. So the baby that looks as if he's dead for months has not been seeing any movement. She's scared. I hope this baby is still alive. What am I getting into now? Life came inside. What is it that happens when you touch a woman in the head and go into the womb to go and affect the baby inside? Those things are not ordinary, but there is healing in his wings. There is healing in his wings. There is healing in his hands. So when Jesus touched a woman that has 18 years satanic bondage, just one touch, 
on that woman, remove the demon that has been afflicting her for 18 years. And she became healed instantly, immediately that day. So some of, somebody else who's a pastor of the church or whatever leader of the synagogue means, is now saying, why are you coming to come and get healed on Sabbath day? Why don't you call during the day? This person has been attending your church for 18 years. He has been coming to Sunday service and also midweek service for 18 years. He has not been healed. Jesus came to a meeting he had today, and Jesus healed the woman. We should all celebrate and rejoice with God. We are saying, why is he coming today? Why not on a day that's not Sabbath day? Are you so conscious of your Sabbath that you have forgotten about mercy? And help and compassion and healing to somebody that has been suffering from satanic bondage for 18 years, who also is a member of your church. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, here we see the power of God in this way. And I want to tell you today that that power is available here right now. So, whatsoever it is that you desire, I want you to pray and touch God today. The anointing is present, there is contact and transfer. No contact, no transfer. But once there is contact, there is transfer. The healing virtue, the healing anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ can touch you wherever you are now. All you need is, can you just stretch forth your hand towards the screen right now? The healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ. He sent the 12 out. He sent the 70 out. All of them came back to give report that something happened when we pray in your name. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ now. And whatever sickness, disease, or infirmity has been afflicting you for years, it's going to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, anyone that is sick of any sickness, spiritual sickness, mental sickness, social sickness, financial sickness, ministerial sickness, marital sickness, educational sickness, whatever kind of sickness, Even sicknesses of the soul, depression, affliction, harassment, obsessions, whatsoever it is. Even if it is possession by the devil, let every devil that has been hanging around your life leave you now in the name of Jesus. I command you, devil, lose your hold on these ones in the name of Jesus. And every symptoms of evil you are brought into their body, damage their organs of their body that it cannot do work well or function the way they are supposed to function. I rebuke that demonic harassment in the name of Jesus. I say, Satan, lose your hold in the name of Jesus. And let them go free. And let the healing anointing flow from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And let that sickness just flow out of your body like a river that is flowing away. Let that sickness flow away from your body. Just move out, move out, move out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And any organ that the sickness and the demon that's causing the sickness has damaged in your body, let that organ be restored now to perfection. In the name of Jesus. Your lungs, your liver, your kidney, let them receive your heart. Let them receive a total restoration now, the way God created them in the beginning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you. Amen.